Salut, Charles Gators! Salut, de saint bartholomé Oui, c'est vrai. Uh, I'm on vacances. I'm on vacation in St. Bart's, as you guys know if you've been following my Instagram. But you know what? I missed you. I fucking missed all you guys. And I didn't want to leave you on bread and water while I'm on diamonds and rosé and, you know, tuna tartare and langoustine and all of this fantastic stuff. <clears throat> But I also don't want to rub it in that I'm on vacation. Just kidding. Yes, I do. But look, I feel like there's so many things happening right now that we needed to talk about it. And it's a little like drizzly outside. So I was like, okay, I'm going to come back to you guys. So what we're going to talk about in the next few videos, I'm going to like give you a preview of what we've got going over the next few days. We're going to talk today about Ukraine and tone deaf celebs. We're going to talk about love is blind. Yo, welcome. And tying in so nicely to my getaway, we're going to talk about Anna Delvey. Not just Anna Delvey, but sort of the magic, magic, <clears throat> that she had to finesse all those rich people and how you can do it too. But without scamming people. Like, how can you become an Anna Delvey going from like a nothing to a something without like robbing like financial institutions and being a fraudster? Is there a way to do it in a healthy way? Yes, because I've done it. I'm going to give you my little tips on how to finesse rich people in like an ethical positive way and how to blend in with crowds that maybe you weren't born into, <clears throat> but social scenes that you want to be a part of. Now, I did do a video on that during Evil Week last year, so definitely go and check that out. But now that this Anna Delvey thing is out, I really think it needed an update and you guys have been asking for it, seeing where I am and oh my God, you guys these boats that I've been on, I mean, they're not boats, like the Staten Island Ferry is like a boat. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a little like cold. I was on, I was on one $20 million yacht that I was like, this is, I please bury me here. This is the most incredible thing I've ever seen until I got on the $175 million yacht. Oh, we're going to talk about all those things in the Anna Delvey video. But today I want to talk about Ukraine. Now look, look. Is this a video <laughs> like from the Anna Lynn McCord School of Cringe where I'm going to read some ghastly slam poem about Vladimir Putin and how I would have raised him? Or am I going to tell you all about the history of the region and what I think should be done and who's at fault and blah, blah, blah? No. Do you know why I'm not going to do that? Because I'm not a political correspondent. I'm a potato on the internet. I'm a YouTuber and I talk about the Kardashians and psychology and all these things that we love around here. But I am not an expert on that. And this brings me to kind of the point of this video. Should celebrities slash influencers, I'm going to put everyone, myself included, in that category, should they be talking about the war in Ukraine? And if they are talking about it, what should they be saying? Because I asked you guys on my Instagram, and I'm going to be reading so many of your responses because they're really great. And obviously, they're great. They're like always so great and so thoughtful. <clears throat> It seems like, you know, if you're a celebrity, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Now, the Post came out with an article saying like, shut up, celebrities, nah, all these narcissist celebrities, nah, shut the fuck up. And the examples she cited were like the kings and queens of cringe. We're going to go through them. But then on the other hand, if you don't say anything and you post as usual, as I've been doing on Instagram about my vacation, are you tone deaf? Are you insensitive? What is the right answer? And, you know, <clears throat> we can talk about how this can benefit, this information can benefit us, like, as individuals, because everything that celebrities do is kind of like a microcosm for things for our own life. Like, we can extrapolate those lessons from them and apply it to our own lives. Hello, that's what we do on this entire channel. And, of course, I'm going to give you guys some resources if you want to help and get involved. Because, look, like I said, I'm not an expert. I can't speak on this in any kind of relevant way, but I am a pretty good student of history, so I can give you guys a little bit of context about why Russia has such a fucking boner for Ukraine. It's a gorgeous little place, but like, why do they care so much? But before we get into all of it, normally I'm out here promoting my own stuff. Of course, not in this video. We're going to talk about things that are a little bit bigger than us. There are some links right down below in the description of places you can donate. One is an orphanage for Jewish children in Ukraine. One of my friends, Ola Renata, one of her friends has been basically dedicating her life to working in orphanages around the world. And this is one in Ukraine. I think it's called Tikva. <clears throat> they have 300 
over 300 orphans. Some are kids who have lost both their parents. Some are kids who were just born into such extreme poverty their parents couldn't care for them. And here they get therapy. There's like child psychologists. They get love. They get, um, you know, they get reminded of their Jewish heritage and, and that kind of knowledge and education that is really important. And it gives them that continuity you know, and that that sense of history and heritage that is so important when not only when you're young, even if you have both parents, but certainly if you don't have a family and you don't really know where you come from. So they're raising a ton of money. Also, yo, we got to shout out Bethany Frankel. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, right. Right. The Real Housewife, the skinny girl, Margarita Chick, Bethany Frankel. This woman has been moving in such cool ways for years in terms of charity. I remember in the... Oh, was it the hurricane in Puerto Rico? It must, have been, it must have been the hurricane. I don't know. It's like there's so many natural disasters you can't always keep track. When Trump was president and that dumpy fuck was like shooting um, paper towels like pew at a crowd of like displaced people who had no electricity or anything for weeks. It, Bethany chartered a private plane like a jet filled it with millions of dollars of, of supplies. She brought her ass down there and she was handing them out. Like she puts boots on the ground and they're her boots. Maybe they're Balenciaga. You know what, girl? Look good, doing good. That's my motto. <clears throat> and she she has a foundation called Be Strong. And if you go to the page, I mean, they have constant... Excuse me. I'm so, like, snotty. <clears throat> they have constant fundraisers. Uh, Kentucky tornado victims, homeless outreach at the holidays in New York City, lots and lots of things. Like, they're not just showing up for the things that are trending. They're really doing a ton of work. And so she's raised $10 million in donated aid in you know the last few days plus another 2.5 from people like you guys and she's setting up refugee camps in ukraine you know outside the border to give people the basic supplies give them comfort help them get connected with friends or family in other places or hosts who are willing to take them in and it's just it's so fucking cool because you know what you know what when i asked you guys when i asked you guys what do you think of this should celebrities shut up or should they pipe up which is it you all said the same thing, not all of you, but like what I got was like, if you're gonna speak up, speak up in a way that helps somebody. Thoughts and prayers, stand with Ukraine. It doesn't do anything for anyone, right? It's literally the least you can do. And if you're doing something that's the least you can do, don't do it. Just don't even do it. Don't do anything, right? Because then at least you're not making yourself a target of ire. <clears throat> And when so many of these celebrities have so much and they do so little, it makes us want to tear our fucking hair out. Like, Kylie, prayers for Ukraine. Go fuck yourself, Kylie. How many Bentleys do you have? You're swimming through your money like Scrooge McDuck. And a lot of people were like, you know, I want to see how much these celebs are donating. It's kind of a catch-22. If Kylie gave 10 million, people would be like, why wasn't it 11? Why wasn't it 20? Why wasn't it 10 billion? Because you're a billionaire. So I get why people keep donations on the down low. That's their right. I get it. But there's something between thoughts and prayers and selling off all of your possessions for this cause, obviously. Blake Lively is matching donations, which I think is absolutely fantastic. That's, she's a lovely, lovely girl. But then there's some celebs. You know who we're talking about. It's Anna Lynn McCord. It's Anna Lynn McCord. I'm also very surprised that John Cena pulled a whole bunch of bullshit with this. I love John Cena. You know he's the number one Make-A-Wish Foundation guy like he gets requested the most and he does he does like 300 make a wish things a year maybe it's less than that but he does some really good stuff okay oh good my laptop's dead that's fair no no it's your world it's you do what you feel like doing i haven't used you in days but no that's fine so anna lynn mccord right that poem oh anna i first of all poems Let's just start with poems. Poems. Poems are so cringe and so dreadful. You know, I mean, not by the greats, obviously, but have you ever had someone write you a poem? Oh, you just want to scratch out your own eyes. It's a nightmare. Absolute grotesque. It's horrifying. But then there's other people. Yeah. John Cena. What did he say? He has some like show coming out. Peacemaker. It was like a character in Suicide Squad. I know. Literally, who cares? Exactly, who cares? But he decided to use this opportunity to promote Peacemaker. He's like, if there's ever a time I wished I was hashtag Peacemaker, it's right now. John, can you read the room? That's not, this isn't it. This isn't it. This isn't it. Ugh. 
Maybe something like, if there's ever a time I wish I could take a folding chair and smash it over someone's head for real and just beat the living shit out of them, it would be now and it would be Vladimir Putin. I'd be like, all right, yeah, fuck yeah, man. Me too, right? The whole thing was so weird. But then some celebs are getting skewered for saying things that are pretty minor, like Stephen King. Yeah, like the horror author. I know, right? Who cares? Again, who cares? But he said, he tweeted like, hey, if there's one thing we all learn in school, on the schoolyard, it's when a, when a big kid beats up a little kid, like that doesn't fly. And I mean, obviously he's talking about Russia coming and invading Ukraine, but like this New York Post writer, Andrea Pizer, she's a real piece of fucking work. She's a nasty woman. And I don't mean that in like a fun, sexy Hillary Clinton way. She's just like, she's nasty. I cannot stand her. But she's like, shut up, Steven. Eh. What is wrong with saying? I mean, that's so benign. And I, I, What's, he's not saying he knows all about this. He's not promoting anything. It's a commentary, which is literally what Twitter is made for. So it brings me to the question of, damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? It's on one hand, celebrities have this huge, incredible platform. And they, I believe with great power comes great responsibility. And you know the indictment we have always levied against the Kardashians is... What the fuck have you done to help other people? Now, true, Kim Kardashian is finally sort of breaking out of her like cocoon of narcissism, getting her law degree, getting people out of prison, and that's fantastic. But look, counterpoint, how many people has she helped? Five or six? And that's fantastic. I mean, good for her. That's more than most people have gotten out of prison. But she could be doing so much more with so little effort. An assistant could be like, hey, we're having a canned food drive this time to this time. Come down. I'm going to be there. Whatever. Hey, donate a dollar to this medical cause, to this environmental cause. We could eradicate a cause every single month, every single month. She doesn't do that. And neither does Kylie or uh, Courtney or Chloe or Kendall or Caitlin or Fat Rob or Black China or anybody. None of them do it. And it just makes you insane. Because when someone wants to be famous, I did. Why? Why? Why did you want to be famous? Well, okay, let's get down to it. You want attention. You want praise. You want the rules to not apply to you, right? I mean, okay. The richer and more famous you are, the fewer rules <laughs> apply. You know how many fake vax cards people were talking about in St. Bart's like two days ago? It was crazy. And people were like, I'm not vaccinated. I have a fucking fake card. It's like, that was amazing. Not that you need one to be there, but we were just it just came up. And if you look at fame through that lens, okay, you want accolades, you want attention, you want to be better than everyone else. Isn't altruism a pretty good way to get there? What is more praiseworthy than good works? What gets you more attention than saving the day? I mean, what floats you above humanity on this canonized saint-like level more than saint-like behavior coming to the rescue saving people caring stepping outside yourself setting an example what is leadership if not that and what is celebrity if not leadership and so when i see these celebs with these huge platforms and they're not doing jack shit with it it makes me want to tear out my fucking hair but is it more or less annoying than the ones who th performatively Talk about a cause, but don't actually do anything. No, that's worse. That, ma that makes me crazy. Because it's like, look, you clearly are aware of, of Ukraine and, and this or, or whatever it is. Fill in the blank. Whatever is trending, Afghanistan, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, <laughs> this says nothing about all the other things that are still happening in the world. Somalian airstrikes. Like, what? Afghanistan. Remember that? Remember those people we just like left behind and fucked? They're not trending anymore, so who cares, right? It's insane. It's crazy making. But so these celebrities clearly know something's happening. Oh, something's real bad. There's people dying. And yet, you're going to post about it. You're going to go that far to be like, okay, I should speak on it. But am I going to do something relevant? Am I going to link to a fundraiser? Am I going to put up any of my own money? No. I, no, I don't. No, I don't think so. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't.
even if your motives aren't pure, even if your motives are narcissistic and you want like the praise and the ad adoration of people calling you a saint, great, I don't care. I don't care what motivates someone to help somebody else. The ends justifies the means. Machiavellianism can actually have an altruistic spin on it if you're clever enough. <clears throat> But counterpoint, and a lot of you guys said this, look, I follow celebrities because I want to hear about celebrities. If I wanted news, I'd follow CNN. I would go to CNN. I would go to news sites. I don't expect a real housewife of Potomac to give me a comprehensive history on the Crimean situation. I don't need her to, but I need them to at least know what they don't know. This has been my goal. Know what you don't know. And I don't know very much. And I've been trying to read up on this and talk to, you know, a lot of people, one of them being like my mom, who is incredibly politically aware. She's so geopolitical. She's traveled a ton. And she's an excellent historian. I mean, she's better than me in a million different ways. And she was talking to me because I was like, why does Russia care? Like, what is what is their boner for Ukraine? And what has this boner been, not just for a few years, not even for a few decades, back to the Crimean War in the 1800s? Like, and I mean, I'm sure centuries and centuries and centuries before. Deep, warm water. Deep, warm water. Ukraine, apparently, has 18 ports. That seems like a lot. It might be less, but let's... Let's say it's, let's say it's one. Let's say they have one warm deep water port. California, where I'm from, has two. Like San Pedro Harbor and, I don't know, fucking somewhere else. Warm is important because Russia, you know what's in, it is encased in most of the year? Ice. You know what else Russia has a lot of? Oil. Why is that important? because the world runs on oil. Did you know that 70% of anything being shipped, like in shipping containers, in any shipping container, going anywhere in the world on a boat, 70% of that cargo is oil. Isn't that wild? 70% of the goods moved around the world is just one product, oil. And Russia's got it, and they can't get it the fuck out half the time because their harbors are frozen and they're shallow. Ukraine solves that problem, so they want it. And so, the reason gas is so high, at least in America it is, in California, I think it's like over $5, it's bananas, is because the sanctions Europe is putting on Russia is delaying the pipeline. It's shutting down the pipeline. And so the price of oil has gone up. So when people are like, thanks Biden, presidents don't set the fucking price of oil, dude. Like it, it is so much bigger than one person. It's not like John Joe gasoline being like, that's how much it is. That's not what it is. And I also asked you guys, on my Instagram, do you think this would be happening if Trump was in office? Because the New York, or yeah, the New York Post came out with a poll, 60% of people said, oh no, this wouldn't happen if Trump was in office. Well, 60% of you guys in my poll said, yeah, it probably would happen. Like, I don't believe Trump had any ability to prevent this. He's got, talk about a boner for something. He, he adores Vladimir Putin. He loves him. I think he looks at him as like the grand high king of what psychopathy can be. And they're both basically in that boat. It's like, ah. Oh. I think the only reason he ever pushes back on him is just to like stand up to the bigger guy in the yard and feel like more of a man instead of a hefty bag full of soup with a four inch penis. So no, I don't think Trump would have done anything measurable to stop this, but I'm so sick of hearing. I'm so sick of hearing, well, if Trump was, it, this one, well, if Trump, it's like, bro, it's over. You lost the election. You gotta move on. I also follow, like I follow on Instagram because I'm moderate, you know, I believe I'm conservative in some areas and this is new. <laughs> this is post cancellation, right? All the people who came for me to cancel me, all you did was make me more conservative and all that did was hurt you in the long run, right? Because I vote and I've got a lot of money. So more than you probably if you're here coming to cancel me and that gives me more power in the world. So congratulations, way to cut off your nose to spite your face. But I follow liberal accounts and liberal politicians and everything, and I follow some conservatives just to like see what both sides are saying. And it's interesting that so many conservatives are reposting these dispatches from Ukraine about how the people are being asked to take up arms. And you know, like 14 year olds are given guns and make a Molotov cocktail. And they're like, this is the first time people have even held weapons, you know? And they, they are using this as, as an argument for the second amendment and in, in America. If you're not American, that the Second Amendment of our Constitution says you have the right to uh, bear arms, guns. You have the right to arm yourself. 
And their argument is, you know, if, if more people had guns, maybe Russia would have thought twice. If that country was armed to the teeth, those citizens knew how to fight, might not seem like such low hanging fruit to them. Kiev, and I know I'm not saying it right, but when I grew up, it was called Kiev. And I know it's been like rebranded a little bit because <clears throat> Kiev was a little too Russian. Ukrainians wanted the city to sound more like their own vibe. I get that, but I literally don't know how to pronounce it, K-Y-I-V. So I'm just gonna go with the old school Kiev. I'm sorry. I'd rather pronounce the old version right than the new version wrong. <laughs> Kiev is 140 miles from the Russian border. If where I lived was 140 miles from an ISIS camp, you fucking bet your ass I'd have a lot of guns. I, I mean, I do have a lot of guns in Montana. I have five. The sixth one's being built. It's a, it's a, it's a delicious AR. But look, I've done videos before about I'm a Democrat in favor of gun control. Why? Because, honey, I can jump through any hoop you give me. Background check, psyche valve, waiting period, classes. I don't care. Throw them all at me. I'm good. I'm not a lunatic. I'm not a criminal. I'm not mentally unstable. Unless, of course, you ask my exes. I am fine with a gun. But that's a whole different topic for a different story. But I actually did do a video on it if you want to check that out. So that's something to be said. It's like, do you, I mean, should more people be armed? Should we all be taking up arms now? I mean, are we looking down the barrel, <laughs> didn't mean that as a pun, of World War III? Because the thing with power and conquest, it's just never enough. It wasn't enough for Caesar or for Alexander the Great or for Genghis Khan or for Adolf Hitler or even for like England and the Dutch West Indies Company. I mean, would they not have all conquered the entirety of the world if they could have, why do we think this is just gonna stop? And what are we supposed to do about it? I have no goddamn idea. I have, I have, no, I have no idea. I have no idea, dude. You know why? Because I'm a YouTuber. That's why. I know I can tell you what we should do about the Kardashians and Scott Disick. That's pretty much where it begins and ends. So I wanna go back and read some of your responses to the question of should celebrities stay in their lane or should they speak out? Because of course, like I said, you guys are so wise. Okay. <clears throat> Celebrities need to stay in their lane. Nobody trusts them. Stay in their lane. But it still feels weird to see regular content while such a tragedy is happening. Stay in their lane. Often they sound unaware of what is happening and it looks like they're inauthentic. I think an acknowledgement is okay, but some of them take it too far and then it becomes about them. Anna Lynn, right? They need to keep their useless narcissistic opinions to themselves. Okay. Oh, this one I like. If their post has a purpose, then yes. Sharing a money donation or clothes donation spots, then the bigger the audience, the better. But don't use someone's tragedy to make your profile more aesthetic. Oof. This is Olivia Bow underscore. Good girl. If you are very sorry for people, then donate. If you can afford to fly a private jet twice a year for work, donate. Genius. They can offer condolences and donate, but they have to stop acting like they're political scientists. I think everyone should talk about it. It's good that they mention it, but they don't need to make a big political statement about it. Offer support, donation, leave the spotlight hungry cringe poems at home. <laughs> the cringe poems, oh Lord. Stay in your own lane. Post fundraising and a small statement of support only if they feel the need to. That's it. But here's the thing. I got some responses from Shalligators in Ukraine. Hi, babies. Please comment below and tell us what we can do to help you. I'm trying to DM all of you guys and get some like real information about what we can do. I don't know if your postal service is still working, if we can send you care packages, if we can Venmo money. And, like, I this is the thing, like I don't know what to do, you know? So I'm trying to direct people towards people who do know what they're doing, like Bethany Frankel and like these orphanages, because like we, we can't just freestyle this kind of infrastructure in terms of charity out of thin air. And I don't want to, tell people the wrong thing. So, but if you are in Ukraine or even in Russia, you know, I want to hear from you guys too. This isn't, you didn't vote for this war. Like you probably don't support this. Most Russians don't, I think, right? I don't know. But one thing so many Ukrainian shalligators said was, I really could use the distraction. And I follow my favorite celebs or influencers because I need to take my mind off this, you know? And so for that, I, I totally get that and I, 
this isn't just my ego talking, I will provide you with more ongoing distractionary content. You know, when I said this on my Instagram, like, look, I'm gonna keep posting fundraisers and stuff, but I'm gonna get back to posting what you came here for. And if you don't like it, I get that. And if that's not the headspace you're in to see pictures of me and St. Bart's on a yacht and da, 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 I get that. Just X out instead of like chirping me because I will chirp you the fuck back. Like, you know that that's how I am. So one of my Ukrainian gators, Lydian, New York. As Ukrainian, I want to say it's incredibly powerful to see the world support us. Another, Anita, I can do this. Novotorskaya, ooh, Novotorskaya, Anita Novotorskaya, ooh, I love that. As Ukrainian, yes, they should talk about it, but please keep your opinions to yourself. Somebody else said, not Ukrainian, freedom of speech applies to everyone. No one is forcing us to listen to their opinions. This is, this is true. But I was, it was interesting. I think overall your sentiments were like, if you're going to speak up, make it like a forward moving thing. Here's where to donate. Here's what to do. Here's a petition, blah, 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 not just thoughts and prayers. But if you don't want to speak up about it, that's okay. Your normal content is still providing a service of some sort. And it's funny, someone chirped me about it. They're like, why aren't you doing, why, aren't, why are you posting about anything except for, aside from Ukraine? I said, all right, point number one, did you go to work today? Did you go work at your hot dog stand or wherever it is you work? You did? Wait, when you were there, did you stand on a table the whole time and bang a wooden spoon on a cookie sheet and scream about Ukraine? You didn't? You did the job that people were paying you to do? Huh. Me too, man. Like it or not, this is what I do. Counterpoint number two. Someone who said this, their page was on private. So, okay, there's a lot of reasons for keeping your profile private. But if you're going to chirp someone for not doing enough to raise awareness or money and your shit is on private, limiting the amount of people who could ever see the greatest fundraiser in the world that you found, the greatest message, the greatest this, shut the fuck up. You sound insane. Like it's always blown my mind. The people with a, with a private profile are saying that people who have a following aren't doing, it's just like, you, well then what are you doing? If what someone is doing isn't good enough, please show me how you're doing better. Please show me the steps you're even taking to try to outpace someone who's trying to help in some way. So look, this isn't our usual video that we've done. And normally we wrap up our videos with some tidy little bow, some wonderful thing of learning and growth. <sighs> this is war. And war doesn't usually wrap up in a tidy fashion. And war doesn't have a habit of giving us just a little, a little winky lesson at the end, a adorable little bonbon of wisdom. What we can do, I, one of you guys suggested this in the replies, is a video on the mentality of a psychopath, the mentality of someone like Vladimir Putin. Now we've done videos on psychopaths before, namely Ellen DeGeneres, who you guys tried to cancel me over, turns I was right. That's funny. But Ellen DeGeneres is not a Vladimir. I mean, she is, she actually is a Vladimir Putin type psychopath because she wants power and she wants um, submission and she wants obedience. She just wants it like in a studio audience and like backstage at her, you know, TV lot. Putin wants it on a little bit bigger level. But the pathology, not so different. So if this is a video you want, let me know. I think that would be fascinating. You know I love psychopaths. I mean, I love to learn about psychopaths. The fact that these people move among us, we have got to be better at spotting them. And the most dangerous approach of all is the Anna Lynn McCord angle, which is they just need another fucking hug. I'll meet you there, Anna Lynn. You, you go ahead and give that a shot. <laughs> I want to know your thoughts on all of this. Should celebrities pipe down or should they be speaking up? Should they stay in their lane or should they use their platform to help? Or is it both? Should they do their regular content, but if they're going to post about Ukraine, make it fucking meaningful? What would you see celebrities do? Should they be the first ones drafted? You know, if they're these liberal celebrities sitting there, you know, saying Putin is a dictator and it's all about free speech. Hmm. 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 My favorite was Justin Trudeau saying he's against authoritarianism. I can't believe I thought that dude was hot. He's still hot. I'd, I'd, still, I'd still fuck him. But I, but I wouldn't do it well. I, you know what? I, 
I would I would um, give him a dry a dry hand job because no one likes those, and I would tell him he's fat. He's not, but I would tell him that he is, and I would laugh at his wiener, no matter what it looks like. I would force myself to laugh at it, and I would also point. Then I would have sex with him, and then I would tell him he's the worst lay of my life. So that's my strategy for dealing with all of this. What's yours? We're gonna be back next time with a video on Love is Blind, as well as Anna Delvey, How to Finesse Rich People, and maybe even a Putin Psychopath video. We'll see you later, Shalligators. Au revoir, au revoir.